Hello and welcome back and today I wanted to revisit the subject of Synology's 2 Bay NAS series and what you're looking at right now are currently the two bays available in 2019 from Synology. Now it is worth mentioning there is one device missing off the end of here and that is the DS718 Plus. I'm not going to include it in this comparison largely because the 718 Plus is a different kind of beast and more and more you guys when looking for a two bay NAS have looked at the 718 and just gone do you know what for a few more quid I could buy a four bay and, all, and almost all the time we've seen in the newer generation of Synologies that the 718 has got less popular, which really surprised me given the power. But because of that, I'm not including it in today's comparison. This is about the core four two bays from Synology. But if it helps, take for granted that if you've got the money, the DS718 Plus is by far the most powerful, the most capable, and the most equipped NAS of all the devices we're talking about today. It's got the most, it's got the longest warranty, and if you don't mind spending a little bit more cash, the 718 is the one for you. However, if you've been looking at two-bay NASs, that means that either your requirements for hardware are a little bit more modest, your budget is a little bit more modest, or you're looking for something a little bit more compact, less powerful, and less noisy, which brings us to these four NASs. This here is the DS. 218J. It's available now for about 125 quid without the VAT, without the hard drive media. Next, we've got the DS218 Play, which is available now for about 175 pounds, give or take, without the hard drive media or VAT. Next, we've got the DS218, which is available now for about 200 nicker on the nose, without VAT and without hard drive media. And finally, probably the most popular of the lot, the DS218 Plus, which retails for about 245 to 250 quid without hard drive media inside and is genuinely the most popular of the four, but that doesn't mean it's suitable for you. So let's talk about what these four devices have got in common. Well, obviously, they're all two bay devices. They all support their own RAID configurations, though it's worth mentioning that only these three support Synology's own hybrid RAID system, SHR. In fact, the Play, I believe, may have only recently acquired that as part of the, an update that came to a number of devices. So if RAID requirements are important to you, and particularly fluid RAID upgrades, and SHR is very popular for that, then you should really only be looking at these two in the grand scheme of things, maybe this one. Uh, but um, otherwise, they all support RAID 0 and RAID 1 level configurations. If you're looking for a device that features uh, BTRFS, something Synology is becoming increasingly popular and well known for, I'm pleased to say that these two support BTRFS. I think it's either going to be available soon on the play or the one gig memory inside is just not enough to keep it afloat, but the, the CPU and memory combinations on these mean that you can get BTRFS as a file system on the 218 and the 218 Plus. What that means in real terms is these two devices have got that file system that has got much easier, faster and less noticeable background snapshots for data protection and file self-healing and data integrity checks of your data. Something that EXT4 on these two devices won't give you. But once again, we'll give the play a pass on that one. Next, if your concerns are to do with multimedia, I'm pleased to say that if you want to watch and enjoy 4K media, these are the three you want to look at. Because these three devices here have much, much better um, CPUs for 4K playback and transcoding in general. Although the Play says it can transcode 4K media, thanks to that Realtek CPU that we'll talk about in a bit, I'd say if you're looking at 4K, again, you should be staying at this end of the table. Because although all of them let you enjoy media over DLNA, the 218J is going to struggle with particularly dense media. The Play will be able to transcode one file, but it will use a lot of CPU power inside. And thanks to the improved memory inside this device, it will fare better. But overall, the Intel CPU inside that 218 Plus means that for multimedia enjoyment, the 218 Plus, particularly when there's multiple people enjoying media at once, or you're um, streaming larger and more dense media types, this is the one for you. So let's talk about that hardware media. I've hinted at it a bunch of times. Let's talk about the hardware inside these devices. So the 218J arrives with a Marvell Armada-based CPU. It is the Marvell Armada 385. It is a two-core CPU, 1.3 gigahertz per core. For those that weren't aware, it's actually the same hardware for the most part as found in the older DS216 
On top of that, it arrives with half a gig of DDR3 memory. So not loads of hardware inside this device. It is designed to be easier on the budget. The DS218 Play, different story. It's got a quad-core Realtek CPU inside. It's the RTD1296, a quad-core 1.4 gigahertz CPU. Now, both of these are ARM-based chips. An ARM CPU means it's, in, it's designed for efficiency and long-term use over time with using less and less power to achieve certain tasks. For the most part, ARM CPUs are only available in 32-bit, a much more older uh, architecture in terms of CPU design and less efficient. Intel and AMD's more powerful CPUs are 64-bit, but I'm pleased to say that the real tech inside this device here is a 64-bit ARM and manages to not only transcode 4K, but also runs a number of the key applications from Synology. So it can do things like Synology Moment, Synology Drive, and a number of those applications that require more of internally. Also, I'm pleased to say, the Plex Media Server is now compatible with this device. I'm not sure if it's in the official App Center yet, but the DS218 Play can now support Plex Media Server, but you can forget about transcoding with that chip with Plex on this. That said, you can't run a lot more of the more intense operations such as virtualization <coughs> or more intense container applications on this device. Now, if we go up one rung on the ladder, we can talk about the DS218. Now, the DS218 has exactly the same CPU as this device, but it happens to have two gig of DDR memory, whereas this only has one gig. Again, DDR4 memory, I should say. So one gig of DDR4, one, uh, sorry, two gig of DDR4 in this. With that, you've also got the USB one touch copy button on the front, and with this device on the rear, you have USB three throughout. Now, if we take one more step along the ladder, we can look at the 218. Plus. Now, you may have noticed with the comparison between the specs on this that this can do everything that the Play can do. The 218 on its own can do everything the Play can do, but a little bit more thanks to that memory, which also assists things like BTRFS. But the 218 Play, by comparison to these, is the daddy. It can transcode in Plex, it can transcode natively, it can support uh, Plex to a high degree. It can run more cameras in surveillance. I believe 25 cameras in surveillance station operation, whereas this can support, I think, 15. I think this can support 10, maybe 12, because that memory, and this barely even 10. Probably more likely eight or five uh, stably, and they would be lower dense cameras. So the 218 Play, in terms of multimedia and more, does give you more. And plus, on top of that, it can run active backup suite. Which leads me to another reason why the 218 Play is the best of these four. And if you can budget it, and I know it's a lot more expensive, worth your time and money. Because in terms of hardware, we could look at other innovations. For example, this device here, if we remove that front panel, has two bays of storage. Click and load hard drive trays that you can hot swap. And if you are going to utilize Synology Hybrid RAID, then you could take advantage of that when adding bigger and better drives. On top of that, you have a USB front mounted copy button and a USB 3 port on the front that lets you back up the contents of the NAS onto a USB drive or vice versa and create multiple backups over time to ensure that portable data is maintained or that you can create multiple backups onto a local USB that you can carry away with you. Now, the 218 looks incredibly similar indeed. If we remove that top panel and look at the front, we can see the front copy button is USB 2 rather than USB 3, significantly slower overall. But for the most part, pretty identical on that front panel. The 218 Play isn't um, hot swappable. The drives are installed internally and you can't chop and change drives with such ease. That shouldn't be a huge problem, but the lack of USB 3 copy button on the front and USB port is a little disappointing. Also, I don't know how well you can hear it on the camera, but the chassis design is a lot worse on the Play overall. If I run my hand across these boxes, that's the noise of the Plus. This is the noise of the 218. Here's the noise of the Play. It is horribly frictioned. Um, and finally, you've got the 21 Plus, that nice plastic chassis. Now, I say nice, a lot of you won't like that. It's not great for heat dissipation for a start. It's good for noise because of a lack of vibration, but much like the Play, it isn't um, hot swappable. Drives have to stay inside the device at all times, and there's no USB copy button. If we turn these devices around, 
we can see another way in terms of hardware that they differ a great deal. If we turn them all around, we can see straight away that this device here is a USB 3 on the rear, luckily, but only one LAN port and of course that rear mounted fan. If we move to the Play, we can see two USB 3 ports as well and a LAN port. And we can see two USB 3 ports and a LAN port. But what makes this one different, the Plus, is it's got the two USB 3 and a LAN port, but it's also got eSATA. And that's because this device can be attached to the expansion device, the DX. 517. And although you can't expand those two drives and add five to make a total of five drives, you can use the expansion, build a RAID on it, and have an independent RAID volume, a storage pool there, I should say, of five more drives. Which in terms of future proofing, once you back it up with the CPU, the memory, and more, make this the safer choice overall. Now, if your needs are basic, if you've got maybe a PS4 in a bedroom somewhere and a TV downstairs and you are just looking to stream multimedia and maybe back up a few devices, these two are great. They will do that. They will do it well. This, the Play, will do it a great deal better than the J, but there's still no denying it will do a damn fine job. If you want to play back hardcore 4K media or you are looking to experiment with 4K media overall without transcoding, these two should do the job. They'll play back over DLNA over the network and internet, dare I say, very well with 1080p and 4K. But when it comes to transcoding, they will struggle a little bit. If you are looking for a two-bay NAS for business and you're using it for security cameras and for using that surveillance station software, maybe active backup and more, you want to look at these two here because they will give you a better coverage and a more stable platform for those surveillance needs and backups. And although both of these other two devices support those applications to a lesser or greater degree, though this doesn't support Active Backup Suite, it's worth mentioning that it will really push how much the device can do and incredibly increase the CPU utilization overall. For example, all of these devices can play a 1080p movie, but it's the amount of power it's going to use to do that one task that's important because it will stop you doing more things overall. If you play back uh, an H.264 codec of a 1080p video file, 8-bit 8 8 -bit, uh, 8 -bit rate um, on this device, it will struggle. You'll use more than 80 to 90% just to play back that file. That will decrease on the play to about 50 to 40%, and it will decrease to about 40% on this. But on the 218, it won't go above 20 odd percent. It's about how much of its resources it's going to use at a given time. And that's why the 218 is the king of the hill here and why it still continues to be popular. Because it can do all of those tasks, but it can multitask better and do a number of them at the same time. And I've, I didn't even mention in terms of encryption, the safety of your files. Now, all of these will back up to a third party cloud platform and they'll use all those great apps, but the data inside your device has to be safe and that's where encryption comes in. And these, all these devices support encryption but the 218 Play runs a faster, better version of encryption. And when you're encrypting files and data in transit, it uses a lot of system resources to do that. And when it does that, if you use a less versatile and less efficient encryption system, AES-256, 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 the result is you'll use more system resources and get a lower read-write speed with encryption enabled. This device supports AES-NI, that's the new instruction encryption system, which means it encrypts to the same safe degree using less system resources and faster too. So you'll see less of a dip in performance with the 218 Play. I'm going to wrap things up here. This has been the key two base from Synology in the first part of 2019. Yes, the 718, which is over here, invisible, is by far the best of the five. But unfortunately with that one, when you're spending that kind of money, there are better four bays out there. If you're interested in buying a two bay, do visit the guys at span.com. If you want to learn more about the best two bay NASs from Synology, one, visit NAS Compares, and two, later this year, hopefully towards the end of this year when Synology start announcing their new kit, we will compare all of those new devices against the old. But otherwise, thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this, and I'll see you next time.